Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here with your vlog update. As we talk about Nicole, let me get right to the graphics here because it's everything you need to see. We've got a hurricane tonight. This is a Category 1 hurricane, 75 mile an hour winds. Probably the best it's looked, honestly, in quite some time. You can see the circulation. Pretty broad eye-like feature there. Uh, Northern Bahamas heading towards Florida. Uh, but a huge circulation. What I mean by circulation, the wind flow around this is extending all the way up into the Carolinas. So we're seeing a huge uh, radius of wind. And just to show you this, I'm going to pop up the LSRs. These are called local storm reports. Um, and I want to show you all the reports up and down the coast. I'm going to zoom in. Most of these are storm surge or wind reports um, all the way up to Jacksonville, then into South Carolina, and even some flooding occurring up here in eastern North Carolina. So this is a massive system um, affecting a big area. Here's the 10 p.m. advisory hot off the graphical presses here as we get it to load here. It's really slow. There we go. Uh, you can see 75 mile an hour winds moving west northwest at 13 so it's picking up some forward speed probably not going to get much more strength here if it does it would be uh, within the next couple of hours this is going to make landfall overnight somewhere around fort pierce it looks like but that's where the center is remember that the, it's going to be a huge system now by tomorrow morning it should be inland over florida it will weaken quickly now the reason it's going to weaken so quickly a couple reasons here one it's going to be over land, it's going to be away from cold water, and it's going to be interacting with uh, upper level trough. As far as the steering currents, once it gets picked up by this trough for this front, it's going to race it off to the northeast. So for the Carolinas, that means a Thursday night uh, into Friday morning time frame. See, Friday morning it's over Macon. By Friday night, it's up in Virginia. So our worst weather is likely going to occur, you know, Thursday night into early Friday. Now, as far as winds are concerned, Real quick look at the winds just for tomorrow. This is for tomorrow. You can see during the day, winds will gust up to 25 to 30, maybe 35 miles per hour sustained around, uh, you know, 15 to 25. Now, Panthers game, getting lots of questions about that. I want to keep you up to date on that. You know, the rain chances go up as the game, go, game goes on. Um, it won't rain the whole time. That's the good news, but it'll come at waves. When it's going to be raining, it's going to be pouring for like 15, 20 minutes and then done then maybe a break, and then another 15, 20 minutes. So it'll be like that, maybe a couple waves. The winds will be blowing, and the temperature is going up because warm air will be surging in ahead of the system. So let me show you future casts real quickly here. Um, and I'm just going to show you the close-up future cast because this will tell you the story. I'll throw the winds on there as well. Uh, this is the latest future cast. I just got it in. You can see by noon tomorrow, we'll see scattered showers developing as we go into the afternoon. You saw the waves of rain. So for the Panthers game, that's what I'm talking about. Notice that. You see how the waves of rain come in. There's breaks between them. And again, some of it could be heavy, but look at the winds uh, out of the east around 20 to 25 miles per hour. By 10 p.m., some stronger cells could move in. And this is what has me concerned overnight. Some of these cells developing Friday night into early Friday morning or Thursday night to Friday morning, excuse me. These could have rotation in them. The, 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 the atmosphere is going to set up here um, east of the low, which will be over the upstate western North Carolina. These are the cells that tend to rotate. So that's something we've got to watch carefully. I think, honestly, of all the concerns I have, I don't think these winds are too crazy high. They'll be high, trust me. The rain, yeah, the flash flood threat probably for the mountains, but the tornado risk is something that could sneak up on us. And then you can see Friday midday. See that line? It's almost like a line of storms. That could have strong winds with it. Um, that will mix down some strong winds from aloft. So if the strongest winds are going to happen right there in the middle of the day. Notice how the wind speeds go up um, to you know over 30 miles an hour there, maybe 35, 40. And there could be rotation in there. But once the low moves away by 5 p.m. Friday night, look at that. Things start to clear out. We see northwest winds develop. And by Saturday morning, much cooler, drier air starts to filter. And yeah, could see a few wet snowflakes up in the mountains. Now, that severe weather risk is legit. I'm going to show it to you. See tonight over Florida. Tomorrow, that risk gets close to us. Um, low risk in the coast heads up. Some tornadoes possible tomorrow. And then we go into Friday. You see that risk right there. So the tornado probabilities, I've showed this earlier. Um, we call this STP, significant tornado parameters. These aren't off the charts. You know, for a severe weather setup in the spring, I would be like, yeah, okay, but tornadoes don't, in, in tropical systems, don't need as many um, uh, parameters or ingredients. They just need a little bit of lift because you've got so much wind shear, like, you know, 100 times more wind shear than you would with a regular spring system. They just don't have a ton of instability this time of year because it's kind of cloudy and rainy. So if you get any warming at all, and that's that warm front, you can see these areas southeast of Charlotte, you know, 0.5 to 1. Those are significant enough in a tropical setup. Some of these from Monroe, Concord, Albemarle, Wadesboro East. Those are the areas that I think would have the highest risk of seeing um, some rotation. And just to show you the rotational tracks again, 
when you see this, don't. This isn't going to be spe 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 uh, specifically where the tracks are. It's more about hey, do we have some some rotation in there? And you could see a couple of these rotating. You know, early Friday morning, a couple of these tracks spinning up and going across here um, into the middle of the day. So yeah, that's why isolated is the, the key term here. There will be probably three or four storms that you know have some rotation as that line moves up. Now, as far as the timing of all this, I haven't really changed this much at all. Um, I'll throw this up there quickly so you can see. Really, starting Thursday night, the rain starts to pick up, the winds pick up, but it's really Friday morning. That Friday morning time frame, uh, to me, is going to be the worst of this. And as we get into Friday evening, Friday afternoon, things should start to improve um, pretty dramatically. Now, didn't talk about the rainfall. Yeah, there is going to be rain. We need the rain. So tomorrow's the drought update. We'll have some, uh, probably still some drought conditions, but low risk for flash flooding tomorrow. Medium risk for the mountains and foothills as we go into Friday. And that is an area we have to watch. If there's a legit chance of flash flooding, even in dry conditions, it's going to be in these mountains and foothills because you can see these spiral bands wrapping around the low are going to be pushing moisture into the mountains. They're going to intersect the mountains at a right angle. So it's going to act like a cold front. It's going to lift the air and you're going to wring out a lot of moisture. Now this time of year, all the leaves are off the trees up there already. Vegetation's dormant. So runoff of water is much higher than it would be in the spring or summer when things are growing, slowing down that flow of water because grass, trees slow the water down. They just do. They slow the rainfall down. Um, when we don't have that, the runoff is much higher. So you're likely going to see some flash flooding issues um, up in the North Carolina mountains going into Friday morning, maybe Friday afternoon. So that's substantial again. Um, again, let's go back to the future cast because I think this is what people like to see the most. I'll play this again. We'll show you real quickly. Starting probably midday tomorrow, some showers, but really tomorrow night. You know, this is 8 p.m. kickoff for the Panthers game. <laughs> I'm going into the midnight hour and then overnight, and it could be a long night for me because um, if we see a tornado risk, it's going to be early Friday into the middle of the day. And believe it or not, Friday night things will improve. So some of those Friday night football games might actually end up being pretty decent. So that's the latest. I will post another vlog tomorrow morning, probably going to be mid to late morning tomorrow. Um, after I do some briefings in the morning and some other things. But um, we will post update tomorrow and tomorrow night. And, of course, we'll have complete coverage online, on air, on social, as we track Nicole into the Carolinas.